Hi there and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you my PSD and I'm going to talk through all the layers that I used to achieve this final look from that original shot. By the way, this original shot is available for free download in the description below. So as I said, this is more of a PSD walkthrough rather than a tutorial. So I'm not going to be talking in depth each step. So the first thing I did was create a cut out of the shoe. Now I did this with a path. So I went round the shoe with a pen tool and created as clean a cut out as I could. And on the original shot, you can see there's a finger that actually overlaps onto the um, sole of the shoe slightly. So once I cut the shoe out, I just used a clone tool to just quickly and easily clone over that bit of finger so that it was just the clean shoe material and you didn't have anything else interfering. Then I noticed on this white plastic area on the base of the shoe here, it wasn't quite white. It had a little bit of a strange blue hue to it. So I just desaturated that with a very quick layer mask. I'll just show you that. Just I think I just used the magic wand on that to be honest to make a selection and just dragged the saturation right down. I, I try not to take the saturation down to absolutely minus 100 um, just because nothing in the real world is absolutely void of colour but normally like 90 or 95 or something like that is plenty for it to look white. And then I noticed around the edges of that white plastic detail it was quite dirty there's a lot of scratches and things like that and also some stitching problems throughout so i just created a basic clean layer and as you can see it's just fixed a few problems here and there with some rough edges and stitching and that was just using the clone stamp tool and probably the healing brush again this isn't a high-end retouch it's just me having some fun so i didn't go too far with that to keep it simple the next layer I've got here is this detail sharpen. So if I turn that on, if you go down and look at this blue plastic area here in the stitching, it just makes that pop a bit more. And that's just a high pass layer that I've created on a vivid light blending mode. And that's just allows me to brush in a bit more texture and a little bit more pop as and where I want it. It's usually good on things like shoelaces to get the texture to come out and um, any textured areas that just makes it look a bit more three-dimensional. The next I started to do a little bit of color work. I quite like the color of these shoes, but the yellow doesn't look right to me. It looks almost a bit greeny. So I added a hue saturation adjustment layer here. And let me just turn that layer on and off so you can just see the difference. It might be quite subtle because of the YouTube compression. Let's see, it was like this sort of greeny yellow and I've just changed it to a slightly more of a richer, like a warmer yellow. And to do that with the hue saturation, I just went on range, targeted the yellows and then made an adjustment. That way it wasn't gonna affect like the blue or the black or anything like that in the image. So that was that adjustment. And then I thought, well, I've sorted the yellow out, but the blue to me looks a little bit insipid. It looks a bit dull. Now, I don't have this actual shoe in front of me, so I don't know what colour the blue should be, but I was just doing this for fun, so I just decided to give it a good bump like that, and which was simply done with a selective colour adjustment layer, where I went to the blue section and then just played with the sliders. So as you can see, I've added more cyan, added some magenta, took some yellow away, and just messed around until I got an adjustment that just made the blue pop a bit more and just made it more vibrant and tying with the overall look of the shoe. Now, it did affect everything on the shoe that it figured was blue, but what's happened is it's affected the sole of the shoe more than this detail on the side, this panel detail. So, all I did to sort that was duplicate that layer, which worked for the side, but now it's made the sole way too bright blue and saturated. So I just simply added a layer mask on and just brushed that second layer, that second version of the selective color, just over the side panel where um, I wanted the extra boost. So now it sort of ties in quite nicely, I think. Next up, I decided to create a background for this shoe. It was gonna be kind of similar to the idea of the original, kind of a solid color, but I just wanted it to be more graphical and punchy. So underneath all my shoe layers, which are in a group, I added 
a solid color layer so it's just a solid color adjustment layer and i decided to pick a shade of yellow from the shoe itself so i opened up the color picker and i would have just clicked on an area of the shoe that i liked to pick an appropriate color and then looking at it afterwards i added a color balance adjustment layer which just tweaked the color slightly i was just playing around and what i tend to find is if you if you're like 99% happy with a color and you just want to see what a little variance can do um, I always advise adding another adjustment layer on the top instead of adjusting the original one that way you can play around a little bit more with um play around a little bit more with the color so I just took a bit of green out of that which is similar to what I did with the shoe earlier okay so just a tiny tweak and then this I did a spotlight behind it or a spotlight effect which just gives it a glow, but it also separates it from the background um, because that's the only tricky thing when using similar colors to the background as the product to sort of tie them in is you lose that separation. And this is where something like a simple little spotlight can work. And if I just turn the shoe off, you can see all it is, is a big soft white brush basically. So I pressed B for my brush tool, made a very large, very soft brush with white as my color. And I just clicked it down behind the shoe and then just lowered the opacity because at full opacity, it looks like that, which is too much. But if you, if you have it too low, the shoe starts to merge into the background. So I felt on this about 50% was quite good. In fact, I think I did 55. Okay. And then the layer on top of this, you can see it's called grain. And all that is, is a gray layer set to soft light and then with filter noise add noise apply to it so i added some noise to that and what that does is it helps to avoid and combat any banding that you can introduce by creating gradients like we've created a gradient by having this soft white brush on top of the yellow and sometimes it can the colors can break apart a little bit and the grain layer can just help with that um Plus also it just helps to make it look a little less digital and a little more sort of quote unquote analog and not so perfect. And by the way, the way to create that gray layer is you just create a blank adjustment layer and go to image, no, nope, sorry, edit, fill, or you could use the shortcut shift and F5. And then when you do that, you just select gray from the fill layer and click okay then change it to soft light and add your noise. So that's for that. So that's almost it. But when I got to this point here, I thought, okay, it looks good. It's got the yellow background. It's got the colors enhanced. It looks nice and tidy, but it doesn't look very exciting. It just looks a bit boring. So I highlighted the shoe layer. So my group with all the shoe and all the shoe adjustments in, press Command or Control T, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC, to access the transform controls. And I then just rotated it to an undetermined angle. I didn't want to go with exactly 45 or something like that. I just rotated it until it looked, until it looked nice. And by having it at an angle and not completely horizontal, it just adds a bit of movement to it, makes it look a bit more dynamic and just a bit more exciting. And once I did that, I adjusted the position of it. And you can go back, adjust your spotlight if you wanted to bring it down, bring it up. But I quite like having it just in the center as a subtle glow. 